Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe and click on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, a Choosing Beggar parent sends an email to complain about the school bag gifted to her child. Let's jump right in. Every year, I make up four school packs for my school to be given out to whomever the school thinks needs it. The school gives me the ages and whether it's a boy or girl, but other than that, I don't know anything about them or who the recipients are. It's usually a school bag with the official school logo, a lunchbox, drink bottle, pencil case, assorted stationery, a school jumper in the appropriate size, we have compulsory uniforms, a school hat, a few picture books, and a note that their school swimming lessons that year have been paid for. All up, each pack costs me around $120 to put together. This year, the principal showed me an email that they received from a parent who received one of the packs. Her complaints were, the lunchbox didn't have a particular character that her son liked, it was just a plain blue one. The drink bottle wasn't personalized with his name on it. Why did I give a school jumper instead of a brand name jumper that he could wear outside of school? An iPad would have been much more useful than the books because then he can watch YouTube on it. He doesn't like reading. The scissors were not left-handed scissors. Why did her high school child, who attends a completely different school, also not get given a set? Why weren't all school excursions for the year paid for not just swimming? She assumes that the camp fees have also been covered and that I just forgot to put a note in about it. It would have been better just to give her the money, and then she could have picked things her child wanted. I told the principal that under no circumstances is her family ever to receive one of my bags. By the way, not one line in her email included the words, thank or you. I completely believe that that story is true, and at the same time, I can't believe it. In story two, a choosing beggar who wants to buy some books quickly becomes a nightmare for this bookseller. Hey, so I had this customer that caused a lot of trouble for me a few months ago. So back then I was selling my pre-loved books. They were still high quality even if they had been in my bookshelf for more than a year or so. And I wanted to sell them for less to people who might have trouble affording them because books in my country are expensive. I wanted to do this to make some space and give the next person a good quality book for a cheap price. I posted it to groups that sell pre-loved books and I just waited for customers. At first it was alright, somebody would pay me and I would ship the books until there was one guy that made me lose it. Let's call this guy D. So D messaged me and said, oh can I have five of these books? Oh yes, you can have them, they're not reserved for anyone. How much for one book? 150 pesos, about $3. Okay, and that will be 550 pesos. I got weirded out because did I lose count? So I computed the price for the five books again, and it turns out it will be 750 pesos instead of 550. Look, I always give people the benefit of the doubt because earning money is hard. So I gave him that until this happened. Okay, so 550 pesos plus the shipping fee. Isn't the shipping fee part of the 550 pesos? And boy, I got frustrated. Not only did he pay less for the books, but won't he pay the shipping fee at least? I got mad and agreed to him that that's his payment plus the shipping fee. So after a few days, I keep updating him on when I'll ship it out because I have schoolwork. And this man keeps on doubting me, saying that I'll scam him and steal his money. Like, my dude, I won't steal your money. You underpaid me and didn't even pay for the shipping fee, which took half of what he paid. So I got my butt to the courier and paid for shipping because I don't want anything to do with Z. I gave him a picture of the box that was going to be sent to his place and said thank you. I was so tired that day until this man asked, Can I ask? Yes. You have a freebie or something? <laughs> I got so angry. I messaged him back politely out of anger and deleted his messages. To be honest, this has been the most frustrating person I had to talk to online and I hope I won't barge into someone like him in the future. 
Now, to be fair, the bookseller did say that he wanted to give people a good deal on the books. But if in his heart he really wanted to make a little bit of money, then I really worry for his future. Story 3 shows us a freelance designer who gets some work from an agency on a project with a billion dollar company. They can't be choosing beggars, can they? I'm an 18 year old freelancing designer. One day I'm contacted by an agency because they like my work, mascots and logos in this case, and they need 18 pieces of them plus a stylized world map plus an operation logo. The starting price for the mascots is $250. It's lower than the average budget of my clients. The map was a custom quote and logos start at $400, which is then a 5,000 euro-ish order. They tell me they have a 1,200 euro budget. To sum it up, I tell them there is no way I'm doing all of this for that price, and they'd have to increase their budget or remove items from their order. I managed to make them increase their budget to a more decent price of 2,400 euro, still less than half of the real value, and I accept because they're a nice opportunity to work for the FIFA. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for my legal registration as a self-employed, so I'm accepting to start working without a prepayment. We'll just base the order on a quote, invoice. They are a pretty serious and important agency, so I'm not afraid of anything. So the order starts, everything is cool, but sometimes they are being unfairly pushy, and one morning they even tell me, okay, so we should get them by noon. It was 9am on a school day. I'm like, what the flip? They could have warned me days before. I rush to class, tell my teacher I can't follow the class right now, and I ain't kidding. He knows I'm freelancing and stuff, and I rush my butt off to finish those pieces. The order is close to being finished. I send them the invoice they need to sign on Friday to receive it on Monday and boom, lockdown. The major event we were working on is now delayed until next year. Few weeks later, they tell me the bigger company will only use half of the order we made so they are only going to pay me for half. I'm upset, but considering they're offering me two new orders, I'm like, okay, whatever. Turns out, the orders they want to propose to me have a short deadline, and even though they were super pushy to make me take them, I'm booked for the next five weeks, so I refused. And then they have the audacity to ask me for a gesture, because they're going to have to hire another artist and restart, so they claim it's going to cost them a lot. They don't have to restart at all, 90% of the order is done, and half of it was one day away from being validated. So in the end, I was paid 1,200 euro instead of 5,000 euro, and they still had the audacity to ask for me to lower the amount on the invoice. I'm the only one to notice that the budget was 1,200 euro, and in the end, he was paid 1,200 euro. Sketchy. They don't seem like a great client to me. In today's final story, we have an unemployed choosing beggar who wants help applying for unemployment, but she has some pretty strong ideas on how it has to be done. I should have known this particular friend would end up being a choosing beggar. It started when she asked me to help her fill out a claim for unemployment. She kept saying I was doing it wrong. Why don't my 2020 job show up? And it doesn't say that I'm self-employed. I don't know. Let's find. And why does it list stuff from last year? because you can still get money from them. They're in the time period. No, they're last year. Why don't you have this year's? These jobs can still give you money. Why not get that money? It's stupid to not get it. Because I want to see this year. I have to tell them to give me the money because I can't work due to the virus. Okay, one thing at a time. She continued to scream and text other people to show me I was wrong and they knew the right way. While she did that, I rapidly filled in the information for the 2019 jobs. She then shoved her phone in front of me. See, you did it wrong. Freelancers go to a special site and put in that they're not working because of the virus. Go to the special website. I snapped. Fine. Everyone knows better than me. Let's go to the special site. I'm sorry, but you're doing it wrong. Get rid of this and go to the other site. 
Of course, I didn't get rid of all my work. I opened a new tab, went to the special site that was an information page saying use the regular site and select out of work due to COVID-19. He still argued, yelling that I did something wrong and she wouldn't give up until I made her read it out loud, tell me what it meant, and click on the link. He then screamed again that it didn't show her 2020 jobs. I told her if she screamed at me one more time, especially when I stupidly came over during the quarantine, I'd leave. She apologized and said she was frustrated. I noticed the Add Employer button and quickly added her current work. I really couldn't understand why her work wasn't listed, but I wanted out of there. I added the jobs, had to go back and put in the description she wanted, and while she was still griping that we were on the wrong site, that I should have put in more information so the government understood how bad it was for her, more than other people, I hit submit, grabbed my bag, and started to run. He shoved me back into the chair. Wait, you've got to fill out the form for my stimulus check. Why can't you do it? You know I get confused. Helping would take less time than all the phone calls I'd get, so I quickly found out what to do and filled it in as fast as I could. When I went to hit submit, she stopped me. Where's the part where you tell them I deserve more money? Why? You don't have kids. That's... But I just moved here. I don't get it. Why is that important? It's stressful being here. You'd be stressed if you weren't in a familiar place. I should get more because of that. I tried not to yell as I explained how that was plain crap. I told her I had to go and left. Later, she did call to say thanks. And when she started up about it again, I had a sudden thought. Do you pay taxes on your current jobs? No, it's all cash. I think, here we go. That's why it's not showing on unemployment. She argued forever, saying everyone agreed with her, so I hung up. I got a text later saying that other people changed their minds and agreed with me once she mentioned that she'd been paid cash. Even now, she still doesn't understand it and suspects that I simply don't want to file it for her. I haven't called her in a while. So the question of the day, is this an unrequited love story? Why else would this guy suffer through this? I mean, she's definitely not helping him with his math. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.